Hi, my name is Andrew, and I love God. I'm a born-again man who has the Spirit of God. I don't like labels, but I must say that in 2016, I became a biblical flat earther. Now, before you call me nuts or absurd or off of my rocker, just know that I believed in the globe ball earth model for 29 years of my life. Basically my entire life up until six months ago. When I first heard the term flat earth, I laughed and mocked and called anyone who believed in, that the earth was flat was crazy as hell. What I found, however, is that the more I looked and listened to them, and the more that I considered that the earth could be flat, it all started to add up and the proof kept on stacking up. I love space, the concept and the idea of the heliocentric model, but there are so many flaws in it that I can no longer believe something that has no proof as the ball earth model has none. Make no mistake, you must research something as flat earth on your own and I'd love for you to learn the top five reasons why I became a biblical flat earther in 2016. Please keep an open mind and thanks for watching my video. Here's the top five reasons that I no longer believe in the globe ball earth in 2016. Number one, space is fake. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Did you know that there is no real true photo of the earth from space? We're taught that these images are, but even NASA themselves openly admit that all these images are done in Photoshop. They are composite, computer-generated images. And if you look close, you can see all the discrepancies in each of them. How some of the continents do not match up in size and how the clone tool was used to create the clouds. NASA even took the liberty to Photoshop the word sex into one such cloud formation. This can be noticed when flipping their composite upside down and zooming in. Were they bored? Or is this the calling card of Disney? as we've seen them do such similar subliminal messaging in such children movies as The Lion King and Tangled. I'm coming to find that NASA and Disney have a lot in common. Every aspect of space footage is fake. We've seen water bubbles in footage and other discrepancies such as flimsy hatch lids which clearly show this is not real whatsoever. Footage from the ISS is easily faked using a green screen and what is known as a zero-g plane, as I'm sure of other methods as well. The plane flies high up in the air and then does a basic nose dive, producing an environment where everything is just in free fall. We can see here that this woman seems a little bit on edge and is clearly feeling unsafe, as I imagine most would in a plane that's in a free fall. Nations all over the world fake space, and it's just a money-making scheme. NASA alone pulled in a whopping $18.5 billion in 2016. Reason to lie? Yeah, very much. Number 2. There is no curve. Last time I checked, a ball shape has to have a curve. Somewhere. But in fact, once you truly look, you will find none. Anywhere. There's none. The proof of this is in objects that can be seen from certain distances over water. There are so many examples of this now, and certainly the lighthouse is one very great example. In his book, Proofs That the Earth Is Not a Globe, Howard Hendry exposes this truth and gives us many good examples of so many lighthouses that should not be observable at certain distances and hidden behind an exact amount of curvature. The curve formula for the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, and is nowhere to be found anywhere at all. I found a very detailed video called Flat Earth, A Mountain of Evidence, that gives one such example of lack of curvature where there should be some. 
This is a great video to watch and I highly recommend that you do. Many people who are now waking up are out there trying to find the curve or prove the lack thereof. We've been consistent in finding that there is none using simple tests over bodies of water where there should be an exact amount of curvature due to gravity's supposed force on the water producing a curve. But we have found that there really is none at all. The only reason to doubt this fact is from false curvature that you've been shown in many aspects and we must not forget the mass deception shown to us from evil corporations such as NASA and even our own public schooling systems, or as I like to call them, the indoctrination centers. The textbooks in our schools are written in favor of the elite. Before he left us, Michael Jackson tried to warn us all and tell us of this deception. Personally, the school system failed me miserably and did nothing to prepare me for the real world. Many people I know agree with this as well. I believe we are simply trained to become mindless worker bees for the favor of those in power and not to think on our own. They do not like that. Another place we see false curvature can be found from what's called a uh, fisheye lens. As a photographer, I know personally how these lenses work and they simply distort a straight line such as the horizon. It's easy to tell the true nature of a straight line, say the horizon, when it is in the direct center of the frame. Number three, no movement. Movement of the earth, whether it is the thousand mile per hour spin, wobble on its axis, or the blindingly fast speeds it's going around the sun or moving through the Milky Way, they are never observed, felt, or even recorded ever in history. It's never been measured or have been found to move and just speculated in theories. It's perfectly still and we can prove this using science and repeatable experiments. The gyroscope is an instrument that will retain its rigidity in space and should appear to turn if the surface it is on is rotating such as the earth should. So in fact if the earth were spinning at all we would notice this movement in the gyroscope. However we can see that we observe no motion. We are perfectly still and going nowhere. The Michelson-Morley experiment also found this as well. When the experiment found out that the Earth was not spinning, along comes Einstein to the rescue to make up his theory of relativity, which is just a theory and has never been fully proven. Aries' failure was an experiment that proved that the heavenly bodies are in motion, while we are not using telescopes with water. Telescopes have to be very slightly tilted to get the starlight going down the axis of the tube because the Earth's speed around the sun. Airy filled the telescope with water that greatly slowed down the speed of the light inside the telescope and found that he did not have to change the angle of the telescope. This showed that the starlight was already coming in at the correct angle so that no change was needed. This demonstrated that it was the stars moving relative to a stationary Earth and not the fast orbiting Earth moving relative to the comparatively stationary stars. If it was the telescope moving, he would have had to change the angle. Another strange fact I'd never considered is the fact that airplanes would have to do all sorts of maneuvers just to land on a surface that's spinning at a thousand miles per hour in one direction. It would simply be impossible for them to land and wouldn't they fly faster to their location if flying against the spin of the ball? This crazy mess does not work and it's far from what is real and what we see and observe. In fact, flight simulations always use a flat non-rotating earth to train pilots and the training of these pilots is extremely important for the safety of you, myself and many, many more. The flight simulation is further explained in detail in Edward Henry's book, The Greatest Lie on Earth proof that our world is not a moving globe. Number four, water. The nature of water is always flat when left unmanipulated. It always finds its level. It never curves or bends. The only time it does so is with what's called surface tension. And surely surface tension doesn't have waves like our oceans do. It's called water level for a reason and not water curvel. No matter what container it is in, water will always remain flat. 
Number five, horizon always rises to eye level. No matter what height an observer on the earth will rise to, the horizon will keep on rising to eye level, which is impossible on any size ball whatsoever. Any height you rise on a ball, the horizon would stay fixed in place, but this is not what we observe. The horizon keeps on rising at any height, clearly indicating a flat plane we are on instead of a ball. With the enormous amount of others coming awake to the globe deception, they are launching many more high altitude balloons to see what we can find out on our own. We are finding that the sun is much closer, indicated with a hot spot underneath where it is, which is a clear indicator that is not 93 million miles away, as we're told. In fact, the number 93 really has a lot of Masonic ties and is simply a number found in Jewish gematria, which they love to use when fooling the masses. No proof of the ball. Now, I know it sounds absurd, but when you have been searching for the answer to the Flat Earth versus Globe debate, for a while you will see a lack of true evidence for the ball and that the Earth is truly flat. Each ancient civilization knew the nature of the Earth and how it is. The greed and evil nature of man came along and tried to turn the true nature of Earth into something it isn't to fool the masses and to lead them away from our God. It's this simple. When you trace back the origin of the globe, there was truly no proof or evidence, just mathematics that could work out in favor of the model with the Earth orbiting the Sun. The globe was pieced together over a course of many years and many people had to work on it to get it to work correctly. And of course it only worked with the theories fed to us by Newton and Einstein. Remember that they are just theories as well and they've never been proven in any situation Gravity doesn't actually make sense when you think about it, and a good example that it doesn't is in the following passage from Henry's book. Newton's theory of gravity is founded upon the premise that all objects are attracted to all other objects based upon their mass. Eric Dubase explains that this law of science has never been proven and cannot be observed. This magnetic-like attraction of massive objects, gravity is purported to have can be found nowhere in the natural world. There is no example in nature of a massive sphere or any other shaped object by which its virtue of its mass alone causes smaller things to stick to it or orbit around it. There is nothing on earth massive enough that it can be shown to cause even a, a dust bunny to stick to or or orbit around it. Try spinning a wet tennis ball or any other spherical object with smaller things placed on its surface and you will find that everything falls or flies off and nothing sticks to or orbits it. To claim the existence of a physical law without a single practical evidential example is hearsay and not science. Just remember that many of us are just now waking up and are asking questions ourselves. It's not what we've been taught, but we, what we can prove ourselves. Here's to the Great Awakening. God bless you all.